Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is episode 137. Today's guest is a veteran actor for over 40 years. You know him from films such as Police Academy 5 and 6, L.A. Confidential, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. You've seen him in Carnival, Silicon Valley, True Detective, Jack Ryan, and Your Honor. And of course, he played Lloyd Braun in two Seinfeld episodes, The Gum and The Serenity Now. Please welcome Matt McCoy. Matt, thanks for joining. Hey, happy, happy to be here. Wonderful introduction. You were just off the top of your head, most of it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were reading, right? I was reading, yes. I read it every time. Reading. Or else I'll forget or I'll freeze or something. So <laughs> I mean I, I, prefer, I prefer if you did forget a couple of those credits. That would help me. <laughs> well, we all love Police Academy Five, but who could forget you as Lloyd Braun? So take us back, Matt. I mean, twenty seven years ago, um, the gum aired on NBC Thursday night. Tell us a little so you know. In full disclosure, we spoke to the original Lloyd Braun, um, Peter uh, Kelgelman, um, who played him back in season five. But would love to hear your perspective on how, how the role came about. And obviously, you took it to a whole new level um, playing Lloyd in two episodes. But what do you remember about, about the initial call? Was, was there a, um, uh, an audition for, for the gum, if you recall? There was, there was. Let me back you up a little bit, Chris. You spoke to Peter, who played Lloyd Braun initially. Yeah, and the story, the, the story goes with him was, um, he's he's Canadian, and he didn't have a visa to come back, so he was unable to fulfill the role. Supposedly, yeah. um, would love to kind of hear if, if that's kind of what you heard or what the kind of what the vibe was on on your end. No, there, there was no vibe at all, but it, that's, that's new information for me, to be honest with you, that he, um, I didn't even know at the time that I was replacing somebody. And I, I don't know that I did replace Peter. I'm sure he did a, a remarkable job, uh, but uh, borders uh, got in the way, it sounds like. So, um, but I, I appreciate, I don't know that I took it to a whole nother level. I took it to a level. I don't know <laughs> um, <laughs> if that was lower or higher, but. Uh, yeah, there was an audition. I remember going into the room with just uh, uh, Jerry and Larry, um, uh, just the two of them. Um, you weren't given a lot of information going into the room. You know, you guys said 27 years ago. Is that right? And I said to my wife, I, this has got to be 30 years old uh, <laughs> working on this show. So, um, But, you know, they said that the guy just got out of a mental institution. So, um you know, it wasn't a long drive for me, uh, which was uh, which was nice. Uh, but uh, you know, I just tried to play it uh, really as as low key as I could because I feel like once you've gotten out of a mental institute, uh, you're pretty drained. Uh, so I played it as as um, not unlike the character on Silicon Valley, which yeah. was just. We were just um, we were just saying that it's a very similar, yeah, very similar. It's a simple, and, and uh, Alec Berg, who did um, Silicon Valley, had worked on Seinfeld in the yeah. past, so we had a relationship. So, um, listen, it was a gift, guys. I, I got to be honest with you; it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, with uh, you know, even this great time with you folks this evening, and people that stopped me, honestly, every day of my life, and and how much they enjoy it. Uh, but I, I, I had uh, no expectations leaving that room, uh, to be honest with you, but uh, the call came and, uh, I was fortunate enough to be on board, but I, I gotta tell you on the set, I really tried to stay out of these guys way. They were so funny. Michael Richards was so funny. If, if you look at that hot dog scene in, in the, yeah. uh, I mean, if they'd have let that film run another two, three seconds, I was laughing so hard uh, at that hot dog when he ate that thing. So I, uh, I, I was really just trying to stay out of their way and, and not, uh, yeah. <laughs> not destroy something that was really uh, at, at a point of perfection at that time. Yeah, perfectly sane food to eat. That's a, that's one of my favorite favorite scenes. Um, yeah, it's funny you mentioned. I mean, you, you 
exactly you just described it. You know, you you played it like a guy who was drained and just sort of like, yeah, just kind of floating through. Like I just got out of a mental institution. This is just, you know, just kind of going through, which is, uh, it's just, it adds that sense of humor. Cause then you got Kramer playing off that Michael Rich is playing off. Well, that. Just, you know. That's just it. You have to look at, at the players around you. And, and Michael was so big, uh, you know, my gosh, to his credit, the guy was unbelievable on that show. Yeah. And uh, so anytime you see somebody that is, is that high, I, I think it's better to go low, and um, I, and that's that's the way I tried to play it, and it seemed to work out. Even even the computer scene, you know, the uh, when we're selling computers as well, uh, you know, it, it was a uh, it was a gift also to be asked back. To be honest with you, too, I didn't expect to be asked back. It seemed like yeah. a one and out, uh, but uh, you know, as I say, the gift it's a gift that uh, is with me to this day. Yeah, that's great. I mean, sticking on the gum for a second and also with Michael Richards, there's, there's a scene there where, you know, you're staring at Elaine, right? Julie Louise Dreyfus with a missing button, which, you know, we all got to say is obviously a classic, classic scene there. I'm sure that was a lot of fun, too, I'm sure. But um, and then you, you're staring at her, so then you turn and you, you kind of bump Michael Richards with a cigar. I mean, the the, the pipe. And you yeah. kind of knock it to his, you knock your face yeah. into the pipe there. Um, just, I mean, it's 27 years ago, but it is, it is sort of a thing. Usually Michael Richards does the, the physical comedy on the show, right? That's his thing, right? But you kind of played with him on that and you got to kind of do the physical comedy well, with did. him. I'm not yeah, sure. Did he have something to do with that? Or was that Andy Ackerman no, or is that I you? Remember, uh, well, Andy Ackerman is a, is a, is a talent man, but I, I had asked Michael to stay put there. I had asked him to just not move. I wanted to turn into him because I knew the pipe was there. And, and uh, listen, he may remember it, but I do sort of remember, why don't you just, if you stay there, I'll turn into you. And there, there's a, there's, there's a gag there somewhere. And it did, it, it did turn out. I'm not taking credit for anything. Believe me. Uh, but I, um, I, I was initiating that contact and that's what I wanted to do uh, after looking at Elaine. So uh, but uh, yeah, it's a great moment. It's a great moment. Yeah, and this was this was a season seven Christmas episode, if you will, right? Um, is, is that true? Yeah, yeah. In in in, in yeah. you know decorations and things like that, and you know George was going to deliver presents to his parents when they weren't there. The whole thing. Right. Um, but just taking a step back, were you? You know, this is season seven, Larry David's final season. Um, on this series, would love to hear a little bit about um, how involved he was. But were you were you a fan of the show, or you know, uh, I guess what kind of background did you have on a lot of these characters? And obviously, you were kind of Lloyd Ron already existed in in some capacity. Yeah. I'm curious if you if you kind of watched that episode, or what what history do you have with the show from a I, yeah. I guess from a fan perspective? Yeah, I, I had very little background on the show. I mean, Seinfeld was also a show that found an audience in reruns as well. I know it was so top rated uh, during yeah. the, and on the day it was. I never watched it to be honest with you, so I had no. I, I you know it's best sometimes to not know much to just go in there, look at the sides that you're given, and play with what you're given and not bring any sort of baggage into you, into the room, you know? So I, uh, I didn't know much about it. I was not a Seinfeld watcher. Um, hold on guys. I'm going to decline that. I'm sorry. I, w <laughs> I went away there. Sorry. Um, so I had no preconceived notions about the show or about, um, I mean, I certainly knew it, but I, I, I really had no history of the show at all. So, um, I think that helped me ultimately at the end. I didn't know, I, as I say, I didn't know I was replacing uh, this, this gentleman, Peter. Um, so I, I don't know, even though the one that Peter played, was he in, was he doing the Dinkins campaign at that time? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was the special advisor to Dinkins. And it was interesting when they filmed that, you know, they filmed two endings because they didn't know if Giuliani or Dinkins was going to win. Uh, obviously Giuliani went on to win and then yeah, Dinkins lost and, Lloyd Ron obviously went to a mental institution, which we didn't know about until they brought this back. So they must have been thinking about this. Larry and Jerry must have been thinking about this for years. Um, yeah. Bring, bringing, you know, Lloyd back. So it's great that you had that opportunity. And I, like I said, you did take it to another level because when we, 
when, when people think of Lloyd Braun, they do they think of you, Matt. I mean, let's be honest. So uh, well, that's that's a, that's a credit to how you played it. That's awful nice of you, and um, I, I hope they think of the other gentlemen as well in some in some respects. But I, um, that's very kind of you. But I, it's something that I get every day of my life, to be honest with you, wherever I am. Um, I was just in Paris for the last couple of weeks, and I had people stop me in Paris. Uh, wow. And uh, wow. you, you do something. I've been fortunate enough to do this for 43 years, and things like that just seem to stick out. It's a, it's a testament to, uh, to Larry and to Jerry and to the show and, and everybody on board. So um, it's pretty cool. I, I, I welcome it. Are you, are you getting – do you find you get more – and I don't know if you, if you have any gauge on this, but I'm curious, are you getting more of the like serenity now yelled at you or more of like perfectly sane food to eat or let's have a chew with a gum? Like, what do you think is more popular, if you will, when, when you are getting recognized? It, it's serenity now. Yeah. Uh, serenity now. It, it's, it's what people uh, scream uh, across the street. <laughs> it's what people want. If, uh, if I run into somebody and they want me to sign something or, if they want me to say something to somebody, it usually boils down to serenity now. Um, you know, speaking of that episode as well, I, I that's the first time I had worked with um, with Jerry Stiller. Uh, yeah. And I, I have to tell you, we finished that scene in the garage. Uh, and I really went to Andy and said, "I did you get what you wanted? Because I didn't, with Jerry, you never knew when to come in. I mean, the lines were what they were, but you never knew where he was going to go. And I was just at the mercy of him sort of stopping, talking for me to interject my line. And I and Andy just shook his head and said, it's, you know, it's gold, which it was with Jerry Stiller in, in, in anything that he did. So, uh, as I say, I, I really I tried to stay out of the way of these people that were really so good at what they did. Yeah. And, and uh, since you, you know, you brought you, so coming back, that's, that's two seasons later that uh, Serenity now yeah. so you, you do, you do the gum in season seven and then they bring you back for, for, for the, for Serenity now, um, as you mentioned, obviously you're, you're, you're a thrill, but um, what do you remember about that sort of like, you know, was it, was it different when you came back, you know, Larry wasn't there, um, uh, you know, it, did you notice any type of change or was it like you remembered it like it was yesterday? I mean, it's two years, I guess, probably about that. Yeah, two that, years that past. I, yeah. I think what had changed the most, I think the first one I did was with a studio audience and Serenity Now was no audience because I, I'm sure other cast members have told you this. The audience got in the way, in a sense. They were so far ahead of uh, Michael coming in or... Uh, the, the laughs were actually so big and long too. It, it 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 disrupted the rhythm of the show and the jokes. Have you heard that in the past from other people you've spoken to? Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I, it even started earlier on before the end. And I think Larry David used to not like that when those laughs would happen because it kind of cut into the timing and, and everything else. Yeah, yeah. It, we have we have heard similar stories. It changed the timing so much, and so when I went back. I believe there was an audience for, for Chinese gum, but I don't know that there was an audience for, um, I, I know there wasn't an audience for Serenity Now. Um, so listen, I, I, I love the feedback, and, uh, but they were such a well-oiled machine at that time that, <laughs> listen, they knew the jokes were there, and they knew it was still gold, so they didn't need, uh, they didn't need that uh, affirmation uh, from the audience to tell them that and uh, uh you know you can look at any episode in that but nine years right i was the last was serenity now in the ninth yeah that was the that was the final season ninth um, and, yeah um, yeah with that, and yeah steve corin wrote that episode and you know gamble and pros uh wrote yeah. gum obviously so matt you know i believe you're one of six kids is that true that's true six boys Six. Well, all right, just like myself. So we're in a we're in a special. You're, you've got you've there. got five brothers. No, I'm uh, I'm one of six, but there's four boys, two girls. Um, okay. So and you're in Cincinnati. You grew up in Cincinnati. Yeah, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, 
I, I don't know that I grew up there. We moved around quite a bit uh, when I was a kid. We went from Cincinnati to uh, to Michigan to Indiana, uh, back to Ohio. Uh, my mom and dad ended up in uh, the Bethesda, Kensington, Maryland area. And uh, I stayed there for just four years. We moved there when I was 14. And then I went on the road for two years doing musical comedy uh, when I was 18 years old. Oh. Wow. So, you know, wow. So a lot of and fun fact is, uh, you know, just because did a little homework here, Walter Johnson uh, High School, right? Did you yeah. gra you graduate with Tim Kirchin, the uh, ESPN Tim writer? Kirchin, uh, Tim Kirchin's a good buddy. I just saw him about a month ago in Maryland. I went back for my mom's 90th birthday. Oh, and wow. uh, I, I've known Tim since I was 15 years old. And I said to him, I say to him pretty much all the time, we're doing the same thing now that we did honestly 50 years ago he was writing <laughs> sports for the school newspaper i was trying to do anything i could to get out of class to be in a play or uh some sort of musical thing so we're just doing exactly the same thing we did back then but tim's a great buddy and um you know he's uh <laughs> he's done pretty well there on espn before that si and before that with the rangers so uh, yeah, he's wow. a good egg. Isn't that something? Yeah, I, I think he just got uh, voted to the Hall of Fame. A truly really great honor. He did. Um, so that yeah, so that's where it all started, right? And then you you got into acting, and then I think you, you headed to New York, and kind of the rest the, the rest is history. You've had a just <laughs> the rest an incredible is. career. I, I I I appreciate it. I've been really crazy lucky. I went on the road for two years at eighteen, and. Uh, did musical comedy. We had a theater in Atlanta and a theater in D.C. Uh, I did, I think, I, as much fun as it was, it showed me that I had really no idea what I was doing. Uh, and I went to New York and graduated from the Neighborhood Playhouse um, in 1979 and got a foundation. I mean, if I was going to do this for a living, I needed some sort of foundation to base it on. And uh, working with Sandy Meisner there and Bill Alderson and people there at the Playhouse, which I'm on the board of directors at the neighborhood playhouse. No. So it, it's a crazy full circle thing uh, that is uh, once again, uh, just been a gift in my life to be still a part of that school. For sure. And yeah, like you said, you, you needed that, that foundation and it's clear that that foundation helped you land incredible roles of police Academy. And then of course, Seinfeld. So uh, back, back to the gum, just cause it's, it's such a, a memorable episode with and you have so many scenes in it from the just the opening scene when you come into the you know tom's restaurant there a monk and, sorry right um with kramer george um and jerry just i, I kind of love you know you had a lot with kramer but for, i, I kind of love the um the relationship you and jerry had because it, he didn't really have that in the, the original lloyd braun they didn't really talk and in this one you guys kind of really you know I got a yeah. gum guy and, you know, it was, uh, I loved how you guys played, played off of each other. I'd well, love to hear your, your thoughts on yeah, Jerry. It, it was great. I had sort of a, a different relationship with everybody there. I mean, Michael Kramer sort of took me under his wing, you know, he was, he's not crazy. You know, he was really trying to protect me there. And George, we already had sort of an adversarial relationship um, uh, that go, went back to, uh, you know, he sort of rolled his eyes at Lloyd Braun. He's in a nut house, you know. But Jerry, yeah, I mean, that was also prompted by Michael as well, that him taking me under his wing, uh, Jerry, Lloyd, can he can get you that gun, you know. And, and uh, so he was really pushing me on Jerry. And to Jerry's credit, you know, to his friendship with Kramer, too, he he let it happen. So, yeah, yeah we had we had great scenes together, all of us. Um, I, I think that was the only scene I had with George in the diner. Uh, the rest were with Kramer uh, and Jerry uh, with the glasses at the end. You know, yeah. you know, that's what Seinfeld did. You know, it was just they threw so much into the mix. And, you know, the last minute, two minutes of the show, they just tied everything up. And, uh, you know, it's uh, the glasses were a whole nother thing uh, sitting in the car with Jerry at the end. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, that was a poor man's process in the car with Jerry. So just shooting the shit with him in the car while they're setting up, uh, 
was, you know, I haven't seen any of those guys since, to be honest with you. I wished I, uh, I, I see, I, I've seen Larry in the past. Uh, Larry plays golf at, at a club here in Los Angeles, and I've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to play over at his club. I saw him, the last time I saw him was on the range, and he said, how about those residuals? That was the, uh, <laughs> that was what. He who shoots? Uh, you sh- you, 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 who shoots? Who do you think shoots better, you or Larry, on the course? Oh, I think he's he's. Uh, I think he he plays quite a bit. I don't play as much as I used to, but uh, uh, you know, how about those residuals? Is a very very true statement. Uh, I did two of them, and I can't imagine having done uh, how many total episodes. How many were there? Hundred and eighty ish. Hundred and eighty ish. Yeah. I mean, even my. My buddy John O'Hurley. I don't know. Have you talked to John? Oh yeah, yeah, we did yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many John did, but uh, is uh, that that uh, that mailbox gift is a really wonderful thing. And uh, so that was Larry, that was Larry's point to me. How how about those residuals? Yeah, residuals are doing well for Larry as well. I, and what's <laughs> interesting is Lloyd Braun means a, a special piece to him because that's his you know his friend, his agent. So like he kind of. Yeah. He created that name and character, I guess, based it is. off his friend. But did he, was it a bet that he lost or that Lloyd lost? I mean, the guy actually came up to me in a restaurant probably four years ago. Uh, I was sitting in a restaurant over on Beverly Drive, and he came up to me and said, listen, you don't know me, but I'm, I'm Lloyd Braun. And uh, we had a picture taken. He, he's a big, he's a big mucky muck attorney. Uh, yeah, me. Howard Stern. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it was very nice of him to come across the room and stick his hand out to me and uh, and introduce himself. So um, listen, I the guy gifts the gifts honestly with with two episodes of a show like that. Twenty seven years later, as you say, uh, I, I, I I'm the luckiest guy in Dodge. Just things like that. Yeah, that's great. I, I think Lloyd Brown also had something to do with Larry's play that he did, A Fish in the Dark. I actually saw that on uh, on Broadway. I think he might well, have been did. Like a producer. Yeah, I think he was a producer uh, on it as well. But um, that that would make sense. He, he yeah. still uh, he, he he was a good buddy of Larry's. I think it was a bet or something that uh, uh, you guys may know more than I. But uh, there was some wagering involved with naming a character after him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's great. And, and you mentioned it earlier. Um, I, we did want to touch on that too, as well. The the Silicon Valley. W- what a great show that is. I mean, you know, Mike Judge is a genius, and then you have Alec Berg involved, like you said, from Seinfeld. And what a crew. We talked to Suzanne Cryer, who who was in Seinfeld and Silicon Valley as well. Right. But um, you mentioned uh, you kind of touched on it, but I'd love to hear the story. You know, was it the Seinfeld connection that got you on Silicon Valley with Alec Berg? How'd that come about? And what was that like working on on with those guys? It it may have been internally. I mean, I I didn't know. I I had watched Silicon Valley, so I sort of knew what I was getting into with these characters. But this was a new character they were introducing, um, which was uh, uh, Pete Monahan, which was the attorney that, once again, yeah. uh, you know, not a long drive from Lloyd Braun. It was, uh, it was right. this was the guy that was, uh, I think he was uh, moving women across state lines and uh, he was he had a few, uh, into, a few, a few uh, felonies under his belt, I think. Is what a few said. felonies. Yeah. Which he learned from, you know, he's not an attorney. Uh, he's not a lawyer. Uh, but um, I, I think once I got on board over at Silicon Valley and saw Alec and we, we spoke and, uh, uh, he, he was just very kind to say once he saw me and my work that they had found the guy that they wanted, you know, and uh, that was another thing, guys, too. I didn't know if that was a one and out or not, you know, so I think I was in four or five of those and uh, it sort of ran its course as well. You know, Silicon Valley was I, I look at the last scene I think I did, which was speaking to Thomas Middleditch after we won the case and um the line about the amyl nitrate, I used to stick something up my rectum. <laughs> that was a line that was handed to me two minutes before we shot it. Uh, oh, wow. They didn't have a button on that scene. And Alec wrote it or somebody else wrote it and said, yeah, do this line. And I, I think 
that was probably the only take, and it, we only did one or two, three, maybe three total takes on that. Thomas started laughing the first time. I started laughing the second. And then we, the second one was unusable because we were laughing so but And Thomas really said, we've got to get this. We've got to get this. So we took another minute. Um, and, uh, you know, I spoke about, <laughs> you know what I spoke about. So it was. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a great story. It just shows you, like, sometimes what's in the script doesn't make, make magic. So it's kind of the little things, right? That It, it wasn't. It, yeah. Just rewriting. And I think I think the I, I dipped a, 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 a Tampax in kerosene and uh, put. I think that was a that was lost in a, in an earlier episode, from what I understand. So they had another reason. They found a reason to bring it back with me and with Pete Monahan, and um, so. But they wrote that honestly on the back of the sides and handed it to me and said, all right, this is, uh, do this. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it makes me laugh. It, my kids loved it. Uh, let me just say that. That's great. And you mentioned like, you didn't know how long that was going to last. I mean, and we're glad it lasted a, a, a bunch of episodes. So similarly, like Saipa, when did you, when did you get that call? Like in season nine, like, Hey, we're bringing you back for the serenity now. Like, how did that process come about? Was that from Jerry or, you know, Mark Hirschfeld? Like how that kind of, oh, the whole it was callback. From, it, it was from none of them either. It was, you know, my agency calling me back and saying that they want to see you again, but listen, it's, it's uh, anytime somebody wants to see you again. Well, I don't care what the job is. They want to bring you back on something. And by then I had become much more aware of Seinfeld as well. And I had become much more aware of the feedback that I was getting by the work that I'd done on the show. So, uh, you know, I went back uh, filled with joy uh, to be back on there. So, and, you know, you mentioned Andy Ackerman. Uh, what a talent that guy is, too. I mean, he, uh, he was really, he just knew funny. He, he really did. He, he, you know, he's a very low-key guy. Have you talked to Andy at all on the, sh on the show? No, not yet. No, not yet. Many of the writers and, and other producers, but not, not Andy yet. Yeah. Do uh, you guys throw out a pretty wide blanket to speak to anybody affiliated with the show, I would guess? Yeah. I mean, any yeah, anyone from guest stars to, to, to hairstylists to cinematographers, you name it. Um, yeah. we, we love talking to guest stars and writers. Those are, yeah, you know, they're really ingrained in the show. So have you not, you not spoken to Jason or, or, or Jerry or Michael? Or? Yeah, they did not return our call, Matt. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Next time you see Dyer in the course, call. maybe you can put in a good word for us on huh? the driving range. If I, uh, aren't you guys, aren't you guys it? Aren't you the whole? We are one? it. We are the number one destination for Seinfeld fans. Yes. Yeah. Um, and how long have you guys been around? Uh, almost, almost three years, right, Chris? Three years. Like, like two yeah. and a half ish. Yeah. Almost three. And you've seen the numbers grow. Yeah. They're growing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like Seinfeld was, you know, we're finding our audience on Wednesday night, a homegrown show and, uh, we're building from there. Are, are we live here now? No, we're not live. No, no, no. Okay. Um, well, you know, gosh, if I ever run in any of them, I would tell you to, to, uh, to sign up, but, uh, I, I got to think the reach outs that they get are fairly vast uh, to to be a part of, you know, anything Seinfeld. I would think uh, they get hit a pretty good. I would be my. Guess. Yeah. I mean, listen, we uh, we try to be as niche as possible and stay in our lane and, and, and keep it to Seinfeld. And obviously there's extensions, obviously, with Alec Berg and things like right. that, of course. But we're trying to chronicle the greatest show ever. You know, we grew up with it in the nineties. We watched it live and right. spe speaking with people like you, it's just, it's a treat. I mean, I'll never forget watching Lloyd Braun live. I'm like, Holy shit. That the police Academy five. Right. I mean, like, you know, you were just such a, you were such a familiar face. Um, well, it was such a treat to treat to watch it. By the way, was uh, we talked about this earlier and it's a little off topic, but was Gretzky ever on set uh, on police Academy five? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, oh. Had, uh, yeah, he, um, 
Well, I mean, that's where I, I had met Wayne. I, I, uh, he, he's, a, he's a great friend. He was for a long, long time. But Janet, you know, that was another thing with Police Academy, too. I, I went in to replace Gutenberg. And, you know, that was just, I remember them bringing Janet in as well. And we just went in and spoke to the head of the studio. It was a very easy process. And uh, that was Paul Mislansky, who, who spearheaded police academies. And, uh, but yeah, uh, Wayne and Janet had just met. We shot that down in Miami Beach. My son was born on that show, which uh, I still hold. It holds a great place for me with my son being born down there. So that's 35 years ago. Uh, but yeah, Wayne, Wayne was there and uh, uh, Janet was there. And uh, there's still people that I, uh, I, I just, they're a gift to my life, both of them. And they're, they're a family. Um, that's great. We, we don't cross the paths that we used to, but uh, I love them both very much. That's great to hear. Um, yeah. You know, you know, just touch it back on Seinfeld for me. There's two two scenes in particular that I would just wanted to get your take on. Uh, one you sort of already touched on, but with the two scenes, one where you're, you're all just sitting around chewing the gum, you know, just having a chew, as Kramer says. You know, this is what the holidays are all about. You're just sitting on the couch, just like you said, with that stare of like, you know, I just got to have a mental institution. I, maybe I got a lobotomy. Who knows? But you're just like chewing gum, just staring. Just a great, great scene. Uh, and then the Kramer eating the hot dog, which you brought up, but I'm just like, how many takes was that? And what was he actually eating? I mean, was it even just the hot, I mean, how do they even make like those two things? I just wanted to get your, uh, yeah. your take on. Yeah, I mean, the sitting on the couch, there was such a comfort in that to be on that. I mean, that set was so iconic. So I, I remember walking in there and, uh, you know, any, any time you can just sit down and shoot the shit, which is what we did. And, uh, you know, Jerry has the flair of cleaning your glasses and, uh, you know, there were just so many little touches about that, but you know, Michael hitting me on the leg and what about that Elaine, you know? So, <laughs> uh, you know, once again, I, uh, these guys give you little things like that during the course of a scene and uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's gold. Uh, you know, what you do doesn't depend on you. It depends on the other person. And these other people gave you so much, uh, uh, to work with and the hot dog it was an actual hot dog um i don't i remember the, I, I forget the guy behind the counter i don't know how he kept a straight face but <laughs> I, it was it was no more than two takes and uh and the second one was actually even harder because i knew what was coming and i knew what michael was going to do and so if you look at it very closely i am doing my level best uh to uh uh, to not ruin something which was total gold on his part. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, you guys have really rekindled my, my memory of, of, of just how wonderful it was and yeah, uh, I mean, how, how much fun I had. You worked with a lot of special people on that show. And we, one we haven't mentioned is, is Elaine, right? I mean, she's probably got on to, to have probably the biggest career I'd say since Seinfeld. Right. But yeah, you know, she had that dynamic also with Lloyd Braun. We'd love to hear if there were any, how was working with her and kind of, you know, obviously what she's done since has been incredible, yeah. but that time on Seinfeld must have been really special. Yeah. I mean, that, that was the backstory that we had dated at some point and had been yeah. together at some point, you know, so Lloyd Braun was a very lucky man. Uh, <laughs> It was, but you know, all of that changed when you go, you know, to a mental institution. You know, uh, so, it's not a, uh, it, you know, it's not a chick magnet uh, sort of thing. But uh, listen, yeah, she, what she's done since then, and I mean, God, she was so great in that show. But even watching Veep, uh, watching the work she's done in film, um, so uh, yeah, she's and and as. Uh, just, uh, I, I think she's just gotten more attractive as she's gotten older as well. Uh, she's just a, a beautiful gal. And uh, I, I didn't get to know her very well, but, uh, uh, you know, it was just that last scene that she had, uh, that she had come in on. You know, I was talked about a lot, but which was great, you know, whether it was George's mom and dad speaking about me, which, which is always 
so great when you do something. They speak about you a lot. And then when you come on, all of this pipe has been laid for you to <laughs> then come into the scene, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way it was written was a real gift to me that there was so much backstory on me and so much, uh, so much uh, talk about me that was scripted. Uh, yeah, the, you you mentioned right. I, I'll know. I could just I could hear it right now. Estelle saying, well, you know, oh that Lloyd Braun, like yeah. she just, <laughs> you know, there's always that love for someone else other than your son. I guess about a mother, but you know, um, to kind of push your son, right? Yeah. Um, but but then all all of that backstory and all of her speaking about me or or or, or Jerry Stiller or. You know, even George talking about me before uh, before I came in the diner. So, I, as I say, there was just this red carpet already laid out for me when I came in there. So, um, you know, I, I, I apologize. I keep saying this, guys, but it's just another gift. Yeah, uh, another. It, it, we would be remiss. I mean, uh, uh, Seinfeld fans know her and love her as kind of the receptionist in the background who, who we never really hear. But in your in your episode, Ruthie Cohen uh, talks for the first time. I believe it's the first time. And she becomes like a character. And we all kind of are like, oh, man, it's Ruthie Cohen. Curious if you had any interaction with her, or if you met her and maybe had lunch. And <laughs> I don't know. We just we all love <laughs> Ruthie Cohen. I, I did, too. And I, I it was about the twenty dollar bill. Right. She was. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Larry but, David's in the newsstand. The, the give it to I, I think later. they let Ruthie do exactly what they let Jerry Stiller do, too, which is just be themselves. And I, you know, any I remember doing that a couple of times with her. But um, you don't change somebody like that. You know, you just let them be who they are and yeah. let those words come out uh, the way they're going to come out. And, and there was very little direction for her uh, because she was such a character anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that was the first time she spoke. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, it might, might be the first time. Interesting. Um, yeah. The other thing we know, we kind of um, doing some research here. Maybe you can you can help us out with this one. We read that um, there was a deleted scene that was shot during the uh, Serenity Now that was sort of mimicking Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross with the with the sales scene always be closing. I believe maybe the one they tried to do. Uh, I don't know if it was just Jason in it, but maybe it was. I don't know something we read maybe it didn't happen maybe you remember that deleted scene boy I, I i don't my friend i um okay. i um I, I i don't i don't think i do i mean i don't as i say guys we're going back 27 years no, but i don't i i, I think, my guess is that what we read was wrong because it's happened in the past but maybe not maybe yeah it's interesting is that right yeah Could um, be. yeah there was um no, I mean, we're George and I are in there by ourselves before Jerry comes out. Is that right? It's just he and I. And uh, I mean, the great thing about that, you know, if you look, my 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 phone's not even plugged in. You know, it's just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just <laughs> pick it up, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> and if you look back on that, you know, selling computers, my God, it's wow. just, the girl from the bus. <laughs> <laughs> And Matt, you mentioned you're a, you're a proud dad. Uh, curious, are your children Seinfeld fans? Would love to kind of see if the younger generation of McCoys are uh, into the show as we are. Yeah, my son, uh, my son probably more than my two girls. Um, but you know, I've got grandkids that are five, two, and three, and I don't think Seinfeld's going anywhere. Uh, and so <laughs> they're probably going to grow up and see it as well. Uh, you know, like so many things these days, you do something and it's uh, it's there for eternity. But yeah, my uh, my son was a big fan and still is to this day. And, uh, uh, you know, it's on somewhere, everywhere, anywhere in the world. <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, and we're just we were looking at some stuff you're up to now. And we want to hear what you're up to. But it looks like Bobcat Moretti um, looks like you just wrapped that with uh, our friend of the show, Lou Mastillo. We'd love to hear a little bit of that. We had a great conversation with him. He's oh, did you uh, really? Yeah. 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 There's also, uh, I think it was a couple of people's last film. I think Sally Kellerman is in that, and it was her last film. Um, oh, wow. And I don't know that that's out yet. Um, that was shot during COVID. Um, and that was 
that was fairly quick for me. That was sort of an in and out. And it was a very crazy time where interaction on set was difficult. Um, uh, the, the, the thing that I, I, I've, I've been shooting since January to July, the second season, uh, the second season of Mosquito Coast, which is on Apple TV. And uh, that'll be out November the 4th with um, Justin Thoreau. Have you seen the first season at all? No, I just, I'm activated Apple TV now, so I'll definitely check that out. I need to do that yeah, too. it'll be, uh, I think November 4th it drops. And uh, the first season was interrupted by COVID. It's only seven episodes with Justin Thoreau. And uh, so we shot down in Mexico City. We shot in Tulum. Uh, so I was uh, out of the country there for a while. And, uh, and not, uh, so, not, a com- not a comedy, that one, right, Matt? Not a comedy. Not a lot of ha-has. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, a great cast and, um, a very different character for me. I play a, a DEA agent sort of after, uh, Justin and his family. It has a little bit of an Ozark feel to it. It's a family in peril and I'm the one pursuing them. Uh, so, uh, a great part. And, uh, listen, it's, it's a, it's a really good show. And as I say, that'll be out in November. So, um, check that out if you like. That's great. From a Very from cool. a, D, a DEA agent to a, a DA in Melrose Place to Lloyd Braun on Seinfeld. I mean, Matt, you've done it all, uh, and we can't thank you enough for spending some time with us tonight. Thank Listen, you. the uh, the 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 gratitude is 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 all mine. I, I appreciate you reaching out, and and my I appreciate you also uh, dealing with the schedule. I know I had uh, I left you guys on hold for a little bit in the past, so. I really appreciate you hanging with me so I could spend some time with you. Thank you. This was, this was, All so, right. this was great, Matt. Awesome. Thanks so much. Excellent. Thanks again, Matt. Thanks for your kindness. Be well. All the best. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>